Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a really nice puzzle for New Year. Happy New Year, everyone. So for 2024, we do have a puzzle which we'll talk about. But, but before we get into the solution of the puzzle, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple facts about 2024. All right, so the first fact is going to be 2024 is divisible by 23, but 2023 isn't. Isn't that interesting? I kind of find it interesting that this is the case. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at some facts before we start solving this puzzle. So 2024 can be written as a sum of consecutive squares, 2 squared plus 3 squared all the way up to 11 squared, or it can be written as a sum of 3 squares, which are also powers of 2, 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 4th, or 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, and 2 to the 4th as the basis. It can also be written as a sum of consecutive cubes, which is, I think, pretty interesting. Now, another fact about 2024 is that it can be written as a sum of two powers with different bases, which kind of uses the 10 twice, 2 to the 10th and 10 to the 3rd. As you probably know, hopefully, 2 to the 10th power is 1,000. 24, which also contains 10 in it, or 1 and 0. Now, 2024 can be written as a sum of consecutive integers. We talked about sum of consecutive powers of integers, but this time we're talking about sum of consecutive integers, which also gives this number a special name. We'll talk about that on the next slide. And by Goldbach's conjecture, you hopefully know that any even integer greater than 4 can be written as a sum of two primes. Not necessarily distinct, for example, if you think about it, six can be written as three plus three, and you can just find the other ones. 10 can be written as three plus seven. 2024 can be written as 1,951 plus 73 by, by Goldbach's conjecture, but that's not the only way to do it. Obviously, there's more than one way to achieve this. Great, so let's continue with more facts. Now, we just talked about the sum of consecutive powers of integers, and we also talked about sum of consecutive integers. 2024 is also called a polite number since it can be written as a sum of consecutive integers. And of course, uh, this can be done in more than one way, actually exactly three ways to do it. And I only showed you one of the methods which starts with 77 and ends with 99. Can you find the other ones? Think about it. This is a really good problem to work with. Anyways, so these are some of the facts. And last but not least, 2024, from a combinatorial standpoint, can also be written as 24 choose 3. Great, so a lot of interesting facts about this number, and you can probably find more on the internet if you just search for interesting facts about 2024 and if you do know some interesting facts please share with us down below in the comments section great let's go ahead and take a look at our puzzle so what is the puzzle here right you might be wondering and i hope you had a chance to think about it but the puzzle is basically one of those puzzles you've probably seen these before they give you a number and then they say it's equal to another number it actually doesn't necessarily mean equal but it kind of like a conversion some type of algorithm or whatever you want to call it, turns the original number into another number by way of several different things. And then you got to find what happens to a given number using the exact same algorithm. And sometimes it's not very clear. Sometimes it's super duper clear. For example, if I told you, you know, one is equal to one, two is equal to four, three is equal to nine, and four is equal to 16, this would pretty much mean take the number and square it. And obviously, if I ask you what 5 is going to be, then you could easily say 25 because 5 squared is 25. But our problem is not that straightforward because otherwise it will be boring, right? So something to think about. Now, what do you think? Take a look at this first. Think for a moment and see what would give us 90 from 2021, what would give us 342 from 2022, and so on and so forth. And obviously, this is not very clear. For example, one of the things that I would always check is, can I add the digits of this number? So for example, if we were told, okay, 2021 
is going to turn into 5, 2022 is going to be 6, then you could probably talk about the sum of the digits. In some cases, it could be the sum of the squares of the digits, but this is kind of like an outlier, isn't it? 342 doesn't really match up with the other numbers. There seems to be a relationship between 90 and 45. We're cutting it in half, but that doesn't really mean anything. So with this information, obviously, with limited information, a lot of people can object and say that, hey, this is not enough information. Then there can be infinitely many ways to do this. But we're going to talk about something that's not super complicated. Let's go ahead and talk about it now. So the idea here is not that straightforward, but think about number theory. How would you approach this problem from a number theory standpoint? So we're kind of like solving a puzzle, and this is kind of like with little instructions, right? So what are we supposed to do? All right, great. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to be looking at the prime factorization of these numbers. Now, prime factorization obviously plays an important role, right? And the way the prime factorization work here is as follows. For example, 2021, how, how would you do the prime factorization, right? You would probably have to look for so many different numbers. But you can kind of write it as follows, which is going to come up next year, by the way, a year from now. 2025 minus 4. What is so significant about 2025? I'm hoping that you know it's 45 squared and 4 is 2 squared. This gives you a difference of 2 squares, and then you can factor it as 45 plus 2 and 45 minus 2. And that gives you 47 times 43. Now, why did I do prime factorization? Because if you are given a puzzle, always do prime factorization. This is always a good idea. Now, think about how we could get 90 from the prime factors. And if you said, yes, we're supposed to add those up, you write about it because 47 plus 43 is actually equal to 90. So this type of rule or algorithm works with the first number. But guess what? It has to work with all the numbers that are given so that we can guarantee that it's actually the rule, right? How about 2022? Let's go ahead and take a look at the prime factorization of 2022, and then hopefully we'll get three check marks, and then we'll be able to find the last one. Okay, so to be able to find 2022, and without further ado, I'm just going to give you what the numbers are. This can be written as 2 times 3 times 337. This will be kind of hard to find because it is a prime number. And when you look at 2 plus 3 plus 337, you're going to get 337 plus 5, which is 342. And yes, it checks with our second number too. But we have to continue to make sure we get the pattern. 2023, how can we write it? This is kind of like interesting because I believe last year I made a video about this uh, 2023 special and that will be two, not two, what am I talking about? I meant seven times 19 squared. But here's the idea. If I add seven and 19 squared, that would basically be seven times 361 and their sum is going to be 368. But I'm supposed to get 45. Wait a minute, if you separate 19s, like 7 times 19 times 19, then you get 19 plus 19 plus 7, which is 38 plus 7, which is 45. And yes, we're supposed to add them even if the, some of them are not distinct prime factors. Make sense? All of these check, so we're good to go with 2024. In 2024, when you do the prime factorization, did you know it is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 11 times 23. Remember, at the very beginning, I told you 2024 is divisible by 23, but it's not divisible. I mean, the 2023 isn't divisible, which I kind of find interesting. Now, if you add these numbers up, 2 plus 2 plus 2 is going to be 6, plus 11 is going to be 17. 17 plus 23 is going to be 40, so 2024 is supposed to equal 40, and that basically concludes our puzzle. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and Happy New Year again. Bye-bye.